Right, so today I've got a power station. It's a 500 watt, 407 watt hour power station. And I guess the reason you're watching this video is to know whether it's worth buying one of these. And I think the answer to that question is a yes from me. A big, big yes. <laughs> So what's it got? It's got four USBs up the front here. It's got these buttons, which I'll show you what they do in a minute. It's got this flashlight. And on the other side, it's got a plug socket. So you can stick anything in there up to 500 watts. Um, and the good thing about this is it's got power surge or peak power is a thousand, a thousand watts. Um, and I've used this to keep the freezer going in the shed. So this takes about seven hours to charge from flat, um, from zero to 100, which is displayed on the front here, like so. There we go. That's fully charged at the moment. Now, if I press that button, that turns on that plug socket, um, but it's not always on. And it take, it, it, the, the fan goes around a little bit before you can plug anything in. <laughs> which it doesn't want to do right now. So, and that's all you'll get. Um, and you can turn it off just by pressing it again. And long press on the front turns it off. I guess this would be handy for camping or if you've got a camper van um, where you do your, your stealth camping, all that kind of stuff. It's got the torch on the front here as well, which is, it's not, it's not amazing, but it, you know, you can look where you're going and, and see things. Um, and there was also a, I think it's an SOS. That, um, if you break down, you can flash that and blind everybody that's coming towards you. <laughs> and then you've got this, I think it's SOS. Handy. So not only can you charge it up in a ball socket, you can also charge it up in various other ways as well. You've got the cigarette lighter at the back here, so you can put it in your car and do it that way. And you can also do it with solar panels. They, they plug directly into this. Um, and there's a socket completely dedicated to that next to the one that you use for the wall socket. Um, so if you've got a foldable solar panel or if you've got a solar shed like me, um, free power, there you go. So what can you do with a power station? It doesn't have to be this one. It could be another one. This is just an example. You can go camping with it. You can use it in a camper van. You can use it outside in places that you wouldn't normally be able to. But I will say this saved me one time. Um, I didn't have enough solar panels on my solar shed um, and the summer was kind of like disappearing. And one day it was really, really cloudy. It was hardly any sun, no, no, no power going into the battery. And I had this, I thought, okay, I hope it's, the peak or the surge power is enough to keep the, um, the freezer going because you've got that initial spike in power. This goes up to a thousand watts. Um, and I was very surprised that it did actually work. And it kept the freezer going for 19, 19 hours and 22 minutes. So basically with this one, and there's various other different kinds of power station with different kinds of power, um, you can have a, a PlayStation and a, a small TV going for about four or five, maybe six hours. So here's an example. I've got a small TV and I've got a PlayStation 2. And the PlayStation 2, I believe, is between 30 and 40 watts, which isn't very much. And the small TV, I think, is about 55 watts. So you would be able to play that just over four hours maybe four and a half hours. So I've got a 42 inch TV here and I've got an Xbox Series S. The Xbox Series S is 100 watts total power and the TV goes up to, I think it's 75 watts. So there's 175 watts there that you could use with this. So 175s into the 407, that's just over two hours, maybe two and a half hours you could get out of that playing whatever game you wanted to play on a big TV. Now, obviously you can use it in any situation. Um, it'll keep your router going. It'll keep your freezer going. Possibilities are endless. <laughs> um, and it's up to you how much 
power you want, I guess. I mean, I got this for £249.99p, which I think was a bargain at the time because it's been taken off of Amazon right now. And I can't even find it anywhere. I wanted to get another one because it's been really, really handy. Um, and I do, at some point, want to get a camper van. So, as you can see here, I've got the small TV and the PlayStation 2. The small TV draws about 55 watts, whilst the PlayStation 2 draws about 41, around that figure. As I skirt around the wires, there's no other wires coming into this uh, configuration. It's all coming off of that power station. So all there is to do is power up your PlayStation 2 or whatever console you've got. And uh, in this case, we're going to play Crazy Taxi. Hey, hey, come on over, have some fun with Crazy Taxi. Here's a few other examples, the PS5 takes about 200 to 220 watts, the Xbox Series S takes about 100, the Xbox Series X takes about 200 to 220, the PS4 takes between 90 and 150, the PlayStation 1 takes about 20 watts, and I believe the Dreamcast is around 33 to 35 watts. So there you go, there's a power station, and that's what a power station does. Hopefully. I've answered some questions for you that maybe you were looking for. Maybe you were looking for this video. I really appreciate it if you've watched this far into the video. We're now at the end and um, if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it.